Hello, thank you for joining me. Today we are at Preston. Just come down to this end of the platform where you've got the two bays where this 150 is. That's looking towards London that way. That way is looking towards Glasgow. The reason we come to Preston today is to see what I think must be the only railway line in England that still has a section of track which runs along a public road. And that railway is the Preston Docks Branch. So where we have these two CAF units pulling in now, once they've cleared, I'll show you where the line leaves the West Coast Main Line. It's very easy to miss. See that concrete wall along there or fence? It disappears down there and sort of almost burrows down into a hole. What we'll have to do, we'll go out the station and we'll go and try and see if we can see from a bridge looking down onto that railway. So it's the railway that goes to Preston Docks, but it also has a preservation society, the Ribble Steam Railway, who run steam trains up and down it. So we should be able to go and have a ride on this railway. And there's also a rather interesting looking museum with lots of steam engines. So that's today's plan. We're gonna follow, we obviously can't travel on that section of line, but we're gonna follow what we can of that section of line, and then we'll go for a ride where we can. So I've now got to find my way out, Preston Station, and um, we'll walk to the Preston Docks branch. So I've come down this side street now. This is where there's a Royal Mail Depot. You can come here to collect parcels, so I could be coming to collect a parcel, but I've actually just coming to collect a view of the railway line. So there is the Preston Docks branch down there. Clearly no mistake in the railway station behind. I can just still see that 150 which we started off beside. So the train goes quite steeply down here when it goes down there. They, I believe they're bitumen tanks that go down to the docks, usually hauled by a codus rail locomotive a few times a week, usually very early in the morning. So the steam train we're going to go on isn't going to run on this section, it will run further down into the docks himself. If we have a look over here, we shall should be able to see the railway. There we go. So yeah, there's the railway curving off down there. So I'm going to walk along the side of this car park and then there should be a footpath into the next road where we should be able to see a bit more of the railway line. So it's quite um, an interesting route to a heritage line. If you were coming to this railway by train from Preston, I'd probably suggest getting a bus down there because it is going to be a bit of a walk, but you know, I quite like a long walk and you probably wouldn't come this way. You'd, have, you'd just carry on down the road down there. So as we go through this car park, which currently has more Buddleia in it than, than the few cars that are parked here. The railway line is running just behind there. So there's a bridge just up here, so we should get a glimpse of the railway there. Then I'm going to have to leave the railway again. This is probably the only bit at, the, at this point I can walk along beside the railway. Further on should, we should see a lot more of the, of the track. And then it goes through a tunnel just up here under the road, so we'll I'll try and show that to you, but I can't promise at this stage. If I can look through there, you might be able to see, put the camera through, there's some, uh, some concrete buttresses. So it's a very sort of narrow subterranean railway at the moment. It's gone right down into a narrow cutting in the ground. So it really would be quite an exciting railway you know, to travel on, but I don't think whether the old rail tour's ever been down here, probably at some point. So we're now in another street. On this side, you'd probably hardly know the railway there. That is the wall, the railway is down there. Let's have a look on this side. We might get a better view here. Uh, if I put the camera over the wall, maybe you can't see a lot. Well, you can just make out the track. So the track carries on in that direction. I'm gonna to have to walk off round the corner and um, I'm gonna try and find the tunnel. I'll walk over the top of the tunnel and continue to see a bit more of the railway line. This is where I am now, at the other end of the tunnel. This wall hides the tunnel at the other end. So the tunnel has basically come from just over there where those trees are. So what, it's 150 yards or so. But if we have a look here, we get a better view of the railway through. There you go, there's the railway line there. And if we walk now slightly parallel, well the railway is curving away from us, but if you have a look here, we finally get a decent view of railway infrastructure. That's the tunnel which we've just walked over the top of. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to continue to follow the railway. It now curves away from the road around there and I'm just going to keep going really till we actually find some trains. 
I've now walked around another corner and in front of me here is the level crossing on the railway so we've been following it from that way and see it says end of staff section so a quarter of a mile or so up there to the railway station at Preston. The, the rails look shiny so it clearly has been used fairly recently but it is, does sort of look overgrown and almost a bit disused. You can see the signals displaying are red, it is switched on. Not quite sure if those barriers are there for any reason, but obviously if a train came, they'd have to move. So, the level crossing to stop all the guard here, the train would cross the road here. So the section we're going to ride on, I don't think it can be far well, there's not a station at this end, because as I was coming around the corner, I heard a whistle and I saw a plume of smoke from a steam locomotive. So, we can't be too far. Now, there's two routes I could take, both of which kind of follow the railway. There's one that way, which I think just over there must be the River Ribble. So if I can get over there, I could walk beside the River Ribble on one side and the railway on the other. Um, I might try and do that now while the road is fairly quiet. Yeah, if I get across here quickly, it probably isn't where you're supposed to cross the road. So if you come and do this walk, don't cross the road this way. Anyway, this is the level crossing. And uh, yeah, this is the now on the cycle path crossing the railway. When we get to here, you can see the track in front of me, that's like a head shunt. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go down there, that way by the River Ribble, but let's just have a quick look past these gates. So you can see there's some lever frame there for changing points. So I think when we go on the train, we're going to terminate just up there. I've still got to walk all the way to the other end first. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cross the crossing one more time and find the River Ribble. So as I follow along the railway, it's basically the other side of this hedge. This footpath looks a bit like an old railway, but um, I don't think it is because the railway's there. And the River Ribble is just down there. It's quite a nice bit where I was walking alongside the River Ribble. I didn't record any of the video there because I was in a hurry. By then I could see the end of the Mark 1 carriages and I was trying to get ahead of the train. Now what happened was back there, I heard I had got ahead of the train but the hedge was so big I couldn't see it. I heard the steam loco puffing away so I found this little hole in the hedge and I got through um, and was able to watch steam train pass by. So here is that clip. So that's what I've seen so far. So I know which loco we've got out today. Here though, I have a choice. I have a dockside walk or a riverside walk. Now here, you get a much better view of the railway. The railway runs parallel. I can walk along this bank and see the train. Problem is, I know the train's just gone that way. So it's gonna be a while. So what I might do is go down across this crossing here and do the dockside walk. So we can have a look at the docks and then hopefully we, we should get to the docks street running section around the time that the next train departs and then I shall go on the next train after that. So we get to the crossing, it says beware of the trains which we are, you see that way, there's definitely not nothing coming that way because you know a train could have come down the branch off network rail but I think that's somewhat unlikely, we will get out here, not just a stiff gate. Bigger place, no but this would be another good place to stand and watch the train go past. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue with the dockside walk. It doesn't look like we're... Oh, I see what happens. Yeah, it says dockside walk. There's some modern houses here. So I think if we go through... Well, they're more flats actually rather than houses. If we go through this modern development, I think the docks are just over there. So from there we can then walk along until we get to where the railway line is. So that's what we shall do. As you may have guessed, I've not actually been here before. Been to Preston Station numerous times. Never actually left the station. Well, I did once go into the town centre actually when I had to change trains or... But that was the other side. I've never been this way out of the station before. So it's completely new to me. So as I do this video, I'm seeing it all for the first time. So here we go past all these dockside apartments everywhere. And then 
we shall get to a gap just here between two blocks of apartments. That's where the, I can see the water ahead of me. So that'll be Preston Docks itself, which looks to me to be a rather large area of water. Look at that, very vast. That is pretty big. So here we are. This is Preston Docks. So I'm going to follow the dock side this way and up there is the section of line that runs along the public road. I've come to the end of that rather large dock and found the railway line. Again, just there, a little level crossing there. And that's the interesting bit in front. Got well, these level crossing gates. It's more than just a level crossing. I suppose it kind of is a level crossing, but it's the fact that the train actually now shares the bridge with the road traffic. So here we have a railway with street running, which is what I've come all this way to see. It's, um, like I say, it's pretty rare now in, in the world, let alone the UK. As far as I'm aware, it's the only place in England where a railway line, you can see it comes off the railway line and shares the same space as the road. There are a few other places, such as in Wales at North Maddock, the Welsh Highland Railway, with its connection to the Vestigial. That runs along the street. There's a couple in Ireland at Wexford. The um, railway line runs right down the promenade, although it doesn't actually share any space with any cars, but it does run on the promenade. And then um, also if you go out, if you get a bus out to Dublin Port, you, you'll see rails in the road. A bit like this, but there's two of them. And I, I was on the, a double-decker bus once sitting at the front, and I thought there was a railway line in the road, and suddenly an 071 class just came down the road. Um, I'll find a picture and put that in now. So that's a bit of British Isles, UK street running. In Germany, you get it. Places like um, in Dresden, one of the narrow gauge lines there, the Hearts does it at one point. So it's not unheard of, and of course I haven't been there, but the most famous one is the Molly Barn in northern Germany. Narrow gauge railway runs down the street. So it, it does happen, but it's fairly rare these days. So this is, that's the big dock we were on, and this is a swing bridge which goes out onto the River Ribble. So not only is it a section of road and railway, but this bridge where I'm standing now would actually swing into that area there to let the bigger boats and ships come through. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to hang around and wait to see the unique spectacle of a train running down the road. So that is the one place in England where you can still see a train running down the street. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in that direction to the railway and ride the train myself. I just thought I'd show you this view here from the swing bridge looking up into Preston Docks. You get quite a nice view, you've got the whole skyline. And that church there, that's always worth pointing out because that is the tallest church spire in England. Not cathedral, because Salisbury Cathedral is tall, but that's the tallest church spire in England. So. Looking over Preston Docks, I'm now going to go and find the railway and ride this bit track for myself. Well, it's not far now to the railway, I've just got to walk through this industrial estate to get to the station. A couple of things I just thought to say about the railway. Oh, there we are, look. 
steam railway. It was uh, originally it was the, Re the Preservation Society were based our railway centre in the old um, steam shed at Southport. So it's known as the Southport Railway Centre. Um, unfortunately, that shed was demolished and they built a supermarket on the site. So the group with all their stock moved here to Preston Docks and this railway has been running since 2005. So in its current guise, it's a fairly newcomer to the Heritage Railway world. But um, always nice to see newcomers. And it's a bit different because, like I say, it's sharing tracks with a freight operation. But as the freight operation isn't seven days a week, and it's not at weekends, they can run quite nicely at weekends and the two operations don't sort of interfere with each other. So I'm gonna continue down through this um, industrial estate. And I think when I get to the end of the road here, I should find the railway. So here we are, come into the shop and then the railway is here. There's also quite an interesting looking museum. So I'll have a ride first and we'll look at that. Trains and museums. So go through here, and there in front of us is the railway museum. But we'll have a look around that later. It looks very exciting. Um, but I want to have a ride on the train because it's going quite soon. But we'll come and see this. So this has a rather large collection of industrial locos. So we'll go through here, and we shall catch the train. <laughs> no, I don't get the nice one in the mini skirt. I get the nice one. Still can't. <laughs> well, here we are, sat down on the train, waiting for our ride up the Ribble Steam Railway. And most importantly, I'm looking forward to the section of line where we shall <coughs> ride along the road. No, I can't. <laughs> It's the level crossing we saw earlier when we walked here. So the steam trains come to here. The path I walked along is just there. If someone wants to walk past right now, you'll probably see their legs. If cyclists walk past, you see the wheels. That's to give you an idea of how far we've come to. So we're not going up there up towards a network rail line. It would certainly make one have a rail tour if they could ever organise that. So what I think is going to happen now is the steam loco is going to push the train to where there is a loop probably happening now because there's the whistle and then she'll run around the train there and then haul the train conventionally back to the railway station where we got on so let's um we're gonna go back now so we're now just coming back into where these loops are so what's gonna happen now is the locomotive will run around the train so she's pushed us the quarter of a mile or so she'll run around the train and then we'll be hauled conventionally as I said, the moment I go back to where we started. Yeah. It was like a clear idea of the bird. Everything was weird over the side, even the red table on the right. <laughs> <laughs> So the train has gone off for another trip up the line. We all now have a look around the museum, just something to show you here. There's all these bitumen tankers. Now these are what the railway is here for when it's not running the heritage line. These go out onto network rail. There is a siding, you can't see it from here, but just around the corner where some more of them go to um, have the bitumen pumped in and out, I suppose. So 
they, they will move at some point, they're not part of the preservation scene. The railway doesn't go much further that way, just some buffer stops at the end of the line. This is the museum. Station benches are nice. Very posh station benches. There's a couple of um, locos here waiting and uh, waiting restoration. You see a sand tank, there's also a crane tank like they've got Foxfield Railway just there. So maybe one day we'll come and they'll be running. You can sort of see the picture and how it's all sort of um, poured down the side of the tank. It must, um, it must have spilled a bit. But anyway, let's now go inside the station. So it's it's a rather different to your usual heritage railway station. It's not an old country branch line where there's a, a nice old station. It's um, all quite modern, this station, but then... Oh, and it, the other thing it's got, I think it's quite nice, it's got a few murals of industrial steam work. There's a couple more down here. So what we'll do, we'll go around the museum when it, well, it's not too busy because most of the people have gone on the train. So it's after a ton of quite well. There's yeah, another mural. One more mural up here. Now let's go and see some similar locos to those in, on those murals. Let's go and have a look at this. It's like the National Railway Museum of Industrial Locos in here. It's it's pretty interesting. So we come into here. These are the doors we came in through from the ticket office that way. We had a brief look at that steam engine. We'll go and have another look. So we go down here, and here we have. Andrew Barclay saddle tank. There's a few of these in here, so we'll see a few more of them. We'll have a better look when we're down at the um, when we're down at low, lower levels here at platform level. Mark one mail carriage there, which would have carried the Royal Mail. And if we have a look, we can just glance inside. Up, he took a steady climb with the night rail against her, play, um, poems playing. So there you go, that's the interior of the um, of the mail carriage. And that is, as I said, that's the night mail poem. It gets to the bit where it goes past cross from grass and moorland, boulder shoveling white steam over her shoulder, snorting noisily as she passes silent miles of wind bed grasses, birds turn their head as she approaches there from the bushes at a blank face coaches, sheepdogs cannot turn their course, they slumber on with paws across in a farm she passes, no one wakes but a jug in the bedroom gently shakes. I'm not going to do the rest of that poem, but um, yeah. There's a little electric loco there, which is something a bit different. Now this loco, this pecket this is called Fonman. Now I've had this loco for haulage at the Spa Valley Railway a few years ago. I did visit the Spa Valley Railway last year where we had a Bully Pacific for haulage. I want to have a look at that video, have a look at the link on screen now. But this was the loco I had last time and I hadn't realised she'd come up here. So she's a Peckett, built in Bristol, 1924. There's the other side of the mail carriage we were in a moment ago. Now let's have a look at some of these diesel locos. I don't know too much about um, industrial diesel locos, or steam for that matter, because there's so many of them. This one's called Mighty Atom, built in Leeds, built in 1943. That's not the train coming back, there's a whistle in here that goes every now and then. We have another Peckett here. So all these locos would have worked at various docks, factories, all sorts of, you name it, any industri industry. There'd have been hundreds and hundreds of locos like this shunting around. Now here we have something a bit different. It's not a diesel loco, it is actually a steam, it's a Sentinel steam engine. It has, if we have a look in the cab here, you can see it's got a vertical boiler. And then what happens is at the front here, you've got the cylinders and they're vertical as well. So it's a bit more like an internal combustion engine. And then the wheels, which we can't really see, they're driven by change. Um, by chains. If you do want to see a similar Sentinel Loco in action, have a look at this link on screen now. That was a couple of weeks ago when I went to Somerset and Dorset Railway, where we saw one in that where we had a trip behind one saw in action. Have a diesel here. And then this is the other side of that Andrew Barclay steam loco. If I walk back here, you get a better view. Looks rather funny seeing an Andrew Barclay steam loco coupled to a Mark 1 Royal Mail carriage. I don't suppose these would have ever worked, the Royal Mail carriages. And then here's its works plate. So she was built in 1918, so she's quite old. And then this diesel, this blue one we saw a moment ago, called Persil, built in 1952. Quite a long work, somebody. And we have another little English electric locomotive. 
And she's very old. Built in 1930. That's her works plate. And then here we have a guard's van with a model of what looks like a Mark Ford City carriage. And I said we're going to see more than one of these Andrew Barclay locos. Here's another one. So they're all similar but a bit different. Things like the size of the cinders may vary. Let's see when this, the other one was built in 1918. This one was built in 1929. So it was a very successful design. It was built over, year, over many years. I'm not sure how many there are today surviving, but a lot. Um, possibly one of the most numerous, definitely one of the most numerous steam locos written. This is something a bit more unusual. This is a saddle tank, very old um, London North Western Railway saddle tank. Let's have a look at the front. There you go. And now it's becoming a bit of a common thing. We have another Andrew Barclay saddle tank. So um, I, I do like them, they're cute little engines. This one's called Alexander. And there's the works plate's gone, so I can't tell you how old this logo is. Unless there's a plaque somewhere. Now, something else I thought was quite funny. Um, it's not running today, but I found a miniature railway. So what I might have to do now is come here again when it's running and do an episode of Miniature Railway Britain. I hadn't realised this one was here, um, but you know, if I'm here and it's running, we'll do a, we'll do an episode of Miniature Railway Britain. So something for the future, because I'm intrigued to know what is under those sheets. It's also the only indoor miniature railway I've ever seen. Oh, and then here we have a Class 47, or rather a cab of a Class 47. Just a cab, not the loco. Come round here. We have a few things to see. Cabinet and models, a few more murals. See the works plate on the cab. We have a 96 to 3 by bus traction. And you can have a little look into the cab there. And now for something rather different. We have a fireless locomotive. Now these locomotives, they don't have a fire, hence fireless. They're charged up with steam. So it's not a fire, again, hence fireless. So you charge them up with steam and then they'd run for about eight hours. I've actually seen one of these at work a few years ago. I was in, I was catching a train from Ljubljana in the capital of Slovenia to Zareg Erseg in West Hungary. And as we departed Ljubljana power station, I, w I was like looking out for it. I saw one of these shunting. They're, they still have one at Ljubljana Power Station, still in use, shunting, which I think is really cool. I'll try and find a picture of that one and insert it into the video now. So there you go. And I believe there's still a few working in Germany. So, um, you know, there's more steam around than you think, but that is a fireless loco for you. Also, unusually, the cylinders at the back is underneath the cab rather than on here we have another Andrew Barclay. Most steam locomotive cylinders at the front. So let's have a look. So this one's called John Howe. How old is John Howe? Built in 1908. This is the oldest of the three we've seen so far. There's a model railway there. And here we have something really different. Well, it's actually quite similar to what we saw. I told you about that that um, vertical boiler Sentinel loco. Well, here we have another one. It just looks rather different. If you have a look but with this one we can actually see a bit more how it works so have a look here this is the works plate you can clearly see the vertical boiler now i'm not entirely sure how this so that's not a boiler i don't think or possibly unless it's got a vertical firebox this is a boiler i'm not entirely sure but in what i do know is in here like we saw on the other one are the cinders so they drive down. As I said on the other one, they drive chains. Well, here, look, you can clearly see the chains, which um, drive the loco. And as for my video at Somerset and Dorset, they do sound rather different. Something a bit different here, banana van. A few exhibits. There's a nameplate of the Pendolino City of Preston, and a model of a Pendolino, because although we haven't actually seen any today, they do Pendolinos pass through daily. That's like a live steam model of a traction engineer. And now we have an Avon side saddle tank built in Bristol in 1909 and she's called Lucy. And there's some narrow gauge wagons, one with coal, one with gravel, one with slates. So they're three of the most common things carried in narrow gauge wagons. A few more industrial model locos there. Signal's red, but we're gonna go past it anyway because I'm not trained. Here's a nice model of 
A dock is even a disused railway on a model. You see a typical dock. So, yeah, nice little model there. Another van, and then we come down to this end of the museum. We have a Robert Stephen and Hawthorne loco built in Newcastle in 1948. That's one of the youngest team locos we've seen in here today. Called Agecroft Number Two. Funny because we, we had a trip to, behind Agecroft Number One at National Rail Museum when I did the Miniature Railway Britain video of the South Guard Miniature Railway. If you want to see Agecroft Number One in action and that, have a look at the link on screen now. There's my old friend Fondman again, who I said had for haulage at the Spa Valley Railway. Um, what I'm going to do now, we're going to go out into the car park because I think there's a couple of locos there to see. Then I'm going to take the train. Um, I mean, I'm going to walk. Yeah, I'm going to have another ride on the train. Walk back to Preston Station and get the train home. Oh, here's the other end of the miniature railway. So it's quite a short one, not the shortest I've ever seen. So, yeah, maybe one day we'll come to a miniature railway Britain episode. But now I'm going to leave you this view of these industrial steam locos and I'm going to go outside. As you can see, the train's come back and the loco is just running around to her train. I just want to show you down this end. Um, I was going to finish the video up here, but I'll explain why I'm not going to in the moment. There's one of the locos awaiting restoration and there's a train behind it. Now, you may be able to hear a noise. This noise you can hear is some men working on a turntable. So they're working on this little turntable to go here. So I'm sure I'll be able to turn these industrial steam locos. They have another one over there and another little diesel and there's also one just there under restoration. So what we're going to do now, we'll go back to the front of the museum because there's a couple of things, there's all the coal, I wanted to show you some rather nice murals. So there we've got Class 86, basically of stuff around the Preston area. Now we're starting at the most modern end, so we haven't yet put one on the Pendolino on. And we're going to go older and older, so we've got Class 40, Deltic, although to me that's East Coast, but anyway. Coronation, Patriot, looks like a London and North Western Railway loco. That looks like Hardwick, which once ran on the main line. In fact, so did the coal tank, which is similar to that. And then we have Lion and Stevenson's Rocket. So, I hope you enjoyed this video today from the Preston Railway. As I said, I'm pretty sure it is the only railway in England where trains still regularly run down the street. If you can think of another one, then you know, do tell me. I'd be interested to know. So, you know, if you're out Preston Way, do come and visit this railway. I'd probably recommend getting a bus down here because it is quite a long walk, but, you know, I quite like a long walk. So, um, thank you very much for watching. Thank you to Preston or the Ribble Steam Railway for a great day. Still time for one more train ride, though, so I'm actually going to go and have another ride before I, I walk back up to Preston to get the train home. But thank you very much to the Ribble Railway. It's been a great day. I really enjoyed it. Do come and visit them. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. And from outside the museum at the Ribble Steam Railway, goodbye.